Hey there, this is BrainStuff, and I'm Josh Clark, and this is the BrainStuff where I explain to you how tsunamis work. The word tsunami actually comes from two Japanese words, su, meaning harbor, and nami, meaning waves. Basically, when you put them together, it means that when these waves hit the harbor, brother, you better get out of there. There are some differences between a tsunami wave and a regular Joe Schmo wave, but any wave is actually an energy carrier. We tend to think of waves as water moving through itself, but actually, waves are energy moving through water. The difference between a tsunami wave and a regular wave is how that energy is transferred and how much energy that wave packs. So the ordinary, typical Joe Schmo surfer dude wave propagates from wind blowing across the surface of the ocean. Well, Buckminster Fuller pointed out that the wind actually sucks, it doesn't blow, but that's a different brain stuff episode entirely. A tsunami wave, however, is propagated by some sort of underwater disturbance. These are called tsunamogenic events. So things like an underwater rock slide, or an underwater earthquake, or an underwater volcano can all set off a tsunami. So think of a rock pile or a couple of tectonic plates sliding against each other on a fault line as possessing a ton of stored energy. We call this potential energy. Now when one tectonic plate suddenly slips beneath the other, this potential energy is released as kinetic energy. This energy is transferred outward from the point of origin in much the same way as when you take a rock or a pebble and throw it into a pond. It creates ripples, right? Well, with a tsunami, these ripples, waves, radiate mm -hmm. from the point of origin, traveling at hundreds of miles an hour, carrying with them a lot of energy. Now, if you're watching a tsunami wave out in the deep ocean, what you're gonna see is about a three foot tall wave traveling really, really fast. But what you're seeing, metaphorically speaking, is just the tip of the iceberg. This incredibly deep ocean wave that's traveling so fast encounters, ultimately, the shoreline. The shoreline that slopes upward compresses the energy of the tsunami wave. It slows its velocity down tremendously, but it also forces it upward. So what was once a three foot wave is now something like a hundred feet and it's at the shore. One of the big misconceptions about tsunamis is that they exist as just one wave. But remember, they're a lot like a pebble created by a rock tossed into the pond. A bunch of ripples are created. When the first tsunami waves reach the shoreline and slow down, the waves in the rear start to catch up. They compress, forming what's known as a tsunami wave train. Since tsunamis pose such a danger, scientists are constantly trying to figure out how to deal with them. The thing is, is since we're talking about such a huge release of kinetic energy, once a tsunami starts, there's no stopping it. So the best science can hope for is to predict their path and power so they can warn coastal areas to clear out as soon as possible. Have you ever seen a tsunami? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe. And for even more great videos, go to brainstuffshow.com.